Once you have a case on hold with your Form I-612, you have to be very thankful because it only means to say that the USCIS has found a hardship on your case. In this video, we are going to talk more about that. So let's dive in and let the journey begin. Hello everyone, good day. My name is Emery. Welcome to Powerful Couple Journey where we talk about immigration processes, especially with the J-1 waiver. I used to be a J-1 teacher way back in 2019. Now I am a green card holder because I got my J-1 waiver through exceptional hardship with my U.S. citizen spouse. For those of you who are looking for ways on how to waive your waiver, this is a channel that will provide you with insights based on our do-it-yourself process. Once you have your case on hold with the USCIS, that is through the Form I-612, they're going to send a Form I-613 to the Department of State. Therefore, you need to make sure you not only submit the Form I-612 with the USCIS, you also have to submit a DS-3035 through the Department of State. DS-3035 and Form I-612 go hand in hand for a foreign waiver. That is really important. That's why both should be submitted in the different departments, USCIS and the Department of State. Based on my own experience, I got my case on hold with the Form I-612 way back in the year 2022. It took almost a year for them to have a case on hold with my form I-612. Then they have there stipulated that they need an advisory opinion from the Department of State that is taking their favorable recommendation before granting the waiver. At first, I was in panic because I was thinking case on hold means that they have to hold it very long and they might not be able to go back to it right away because they're still asking for some evidences from the Department of State which would be the favorable recommendation. And what makes it so nerve-wracking on my end is I haven't submitted the DS-335 yet with the Department of State. Nobody told me to do that one. I don't know the steps. I don't know the process. I didn't have my own immigration lawyer, so I don't have any idea. The good thing is, I prepared my Form I-612 already, and I have all the evidences that I collected. So, it's so easy for me to do the documents when it comes to the DS-335. All I did was, I went to the Department of State's portal, which is travel.state.gov, through Google and I type there what is the S335 and how to submit files and it pops out travel.state.gov and I followed their prompt on how to do it. It has to be very specific and the most important thing you have to put there is your statement of reasons. That will be stipulated on the online portal using your case number. So follow the prompt that it says there because they have a step-by-step -step process. And not just through online, you also have to submit your evidences through a paper packet. With our case, we almost have like 500 pages all in all because we also have our finances, our monthly budget, our statement of reasons, sworn letter, letter from friends and family, psychological evaluation, copy of the medical doctor's note, and pastor's letter, and all other forms that are needed in order for us to really prove our claim with the hardship on financial hardship, mental or psychological hardship, language barrier, employment hardship, psychological hardship, safety in the Philippines, crime, and poverty. 
there are a lot of things that you have to put and we include articles that are most recent that way it's very important to note that the USCIS would consider our claim based on those articles and based on our own evidences that comes from our family members if you wanted to know more about our ways and template on how to have your sworn statement we have prepared powerfulcouplejourney.com where we have all our templates that you can use and you can pick and choose when it comes to cover letters letters and friends and family how to prepare yourself when it comes to the checklist that way you'll be guided on the things that are needed during your submission it is very important to know that you have to overwhelm the USCIS with your evidences the way you will not get an RFE or request for evidence. Request for evidence means to say that they have found some hardship on the case however they wanted to have solid evidences and the claim that you have like for example financial hardship you need monthly budget which is available in powerfulcouplejourney.com and you can use the template and add your financial statement which is your bank statement from your joint bank account i highly recommend that you have your joint bank account that way the uscis and the adjudicating officer with the department of state know that there's really financial hardship once you are enforced with the 212e rule two-year home residency requirement that right there is a solid evidence that is showing how you did your finances either 50 50 and the j1 visa holder is also sharing some expenses that could help elevate the quality of living that you have in your state here in the united states of america so as you see case on hold is something that you have to celebrate you don't have to be afraid you don't have to have an agony of waiting because you should wait at least two to three months for that and as long as you have a favorable recommendation from the department of state with your ds-335 the form i-612 will have to be reviewed again with the adjudicating officer assigned to your case and then most likely they're gonna give you an approval notice first is through online then you can either check with your case tracker and they can mail to you the approval notice in no time so if you encounter hurdles like the ds-335 is taking longer than expected because right now it's between 6 to 12 months so if it's over 12 months you can contact and ask for help through your state senator or state congressman that way they can help you open up your case and they are going to ask for the uscis directly on the status of your case and if you have your immigration lawyer they have the g28 that is a form that they want you to sign because it only has to show that they are going to do all the work for you. That's why a lot of J-1 teachers are wanting to have their own immigration lawyer to have that ease and to have that sense of security to really have your case approved. But again, there's no guarantee whether you're going to get your immigration lawyer or you're going to do it yourself. But the bottom line is you need to make sure all evidences are stipulated that way there is really a hardship on your claim and the uscis and the department of state has nothing else to do but approve you with your waiver and once you have your waiver it is easy to adjust your status through the submission of your form i-485 then you're going to get your work permit or travel document and it's easy for you to have your papers approved especially if you have your form i-130 the petition for alien relative approved ahead of time there is a step-by-step -step process and how to do this if you wanted to know how i did this one please subscribe like share to this channel powerful couple journey because this is really dedicated to all j1 visa holders alike that are seeking for waiver we also have 
J1 Waiver Helping Hands group through Facebook, just agree to group rules and I will accept you immediately. I am the admin of that group and we are 3,400 plus members already that is willing to share our ideas and based on our own experiences because we know that the agony of waiting is really what's hurting us the most and especially for those J1 teachers who are no longer working as a teacher and they wanted to have their work permit to find other means of income while waiting for their waiver to be approved. This is Emery. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and be with us with our journey through Powerful Couple. Have a great day.